in television flashback. Yes! 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 In television flashback. Yeah! Alphabet of video games, I is for Intellivision. Yes, Intellivision. We're doing a console this time on How to Beard Games presents the Alphabet of Video Games. The Intellivision flashback came out less than a year ago, in October of 2014, but originally the system, the Intellivision, came out in 1979 in the US. This is made by Mattel. Yes, that Mattel. The same people that brought you Barbie and Hot Wheels brought you Intellivision. So what I'm going to do today with Intellivision Flashback is we're going to look at what comes in the box, what comes with the system, what is on the system, what the controllers are like, how to set it up, and then we're going to play a variety of games. And we're going to get a look at and a good feel of what the Intellivision is and was back in the day. Alright, without further ado, let's get playing the Intellivision Flashback Classic Game Console. Let's do this on Happy Beard Games. Alright guys, we're getting ready to play some Intellivision Flashback Classic Game Console. And we got our uh, controller here, ready to play, ready to go. Now, we're going to get ready to play some various games that should be scattered throughout this video, mixed in with little facts about the system, and pretty much how to use it, how to set it up, and how to use the controller. So it's kind of complex, in a way, just because the controller has so many buttons, and because it's a dated technology. So it may be a little confusing to some. Let's start out with a really fun game, a simple game, and one of the funner games on this console, to be honest, uh, from what I've practiced. Thin Ice. Mattel Electronics Presents? 1983. A little bit later, guys. The system came out in 79, by the way. Thin Ice. Yeah, we got a little penguin guy we're playing as. Alright guys, here we go. Select one or two players, switch the one key, and get ready, Penguin 1. Okay, I'm ready. Now, I'm the Penguin, and we have to draw a square around other enemies, or I guess other animals, to enclose them. You can pick up those little chalices, or I'm not actually sure what they are, to be to be uh, completely honest with you. And then if you hit that seal, or that sea lion, or seal, uh, whatever it may be, um, I call it a sea lion, uh, you will lose. So he's the enemy. This is a pretty fun game, guys, actually. This is one of the better ones here. I'll just keep that in mind. Now, see the, that red line that the sea lion makes erases your line, so you kind of got to dodge him at the same time you got to get around him. This might take me a couple of tries, but we're going to play this all the way through. Now, the controls are pretty good on this one. You don't really push any buttons, which is actually a good thing. Um, in addition, you don't, um... Oh, no! In addition, you pretty much just use a slide pad, and it works pretty intuitively as you're drawing uh, squares and rectangles. So you just kind of move around, and it should be pretty much exactly how it looks. There we go! We beat the first level of Thin Ice. Look at this! You go out on the snow machine, man! You gotta fix that ice back up. It's pretty ridiculous. It's kind of funny. I mean, the first time I played this, I kind of raffled a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's check out the Intellivision Flashback Classic Game Console Collector's Edition box with 60 built-in games. It has some differences from the original system, which I'll point out later on. But let's just take a look at the box itself. It includes authentically designed controllers. It comes with two of them, one for each player. And I'll explain that a little more later on as well. And it shows a few games there, but on the back it shows every game, every game's original box art. In addition, it comes with some limited edition overlays inside. Now, it says limited edition, so I'm not sure if every 
version of this console comes with those overlays because this is in, in fact the collector's edition although when I was at the store there was no standard edition so I don't I don't know let's take a look at the back of the box which shows all the games that come on the console some of them more memorable than others there is a hefty amount of sports games on this there's a good amount of uh, board game style games there's like classic board games like chess and checkers there's also a few educational or edutainment games there's also a lot of space games space games really popular back then there's even a uh, as you'll soon see a uh, space invaders clone you have these three intellivoice games this is important because uh, there was an add-on for the Intellivision called Intellivoice. It was something that you actually put into your system. It wasn't part of the game. It was an addition to the game. So the Intellivoice actually had only four games total. It has three of them. It's missing the fourth because of licensing issues with Disney. Uh, the fourth one was Tron Solar Sailor. Now you've got these three Intellivoice games, and those are B-17 Bomber, Bomb Squad, and Space Spartans. Now what Intellivoice is, is it has a synthesizer for sound and voice so it'll be able to play you know voice clips and sound effects that sound like an actual voice instead of just like blips and blops in addition there are some unreleased games for the Intellivision those games include Blowout, Brickout which is actually really fun, Deep Pockets, Hard Hat, Space Cadet, and Takeover let's go to Minotaur which I do have the slide sleeve for so let's put that bad boy in there properly. All right, now I'll have a close-up of this when it's on the controller for you, so that way you can see what I'm seeing. Sort of like the Wii U gamepad once again. You, you kind of got to have a camera on it sometimes, so that way the, the viewers know what you're doing. Because actually, these things, especially on a game like Minotaur, uh, it can get very confusing if you don't know what buttons do what. And there's this, this is a game that uses a lot of buttons. Like it uses every button. Um, they all correspond to things on the menu, basically. Um, so let's start Minotaur. 1982. Alrighty. Now, I'm not sure what this is exactly. I think it's a castle and we're going through a dungeon. Now, this is a really innovative game here, guys. It's a first-person dungeon crawler. You know, it kind of has that Doom sort of uh, Castle Wolfenstein kind of 3D perspective going on here. But at the same time, it's it's pretty much 2D. But it's a 3D uh, scape. So it's very innovative, I'd say. Uh, how do I open a door? Let's push the open button. See, they don't correspond to the numbers, per se. They correspond to whatever's on the sleeve. Just to take a couple, couple steps forward. Um, I don't know if I can go forward. Can I just open again? No. I can turn around. You can glance right and glance left. That's pretty interesting. You don't have to turn, you can do a quick glance and it automatically puts you back to the way you were looking. That's kind of cool, that's kind of like the first, like, like, aim control. It's like one of the first earliest aim controls. It's not your direction, it's your aim. It's like the C-stick or something. It's like your right thumbstick going on there. It's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And this is probably one of the earlier examples of that. Now, um, I got Castle Map, which is kind of fun. Uh, kind of funny, uh, you actually have to hold it down as if you were like holding up a map. It's pretty realistic stuff here, guys. And this is something that some games, even newer games, um, still use where you don't just click it, you uh, have to hold it down. It's pretty cool stuff here, guys. This is Count Arrows, Count Food, not doing anything. And then there's another Castle Map button. Um, maybe there's a ladder in here. Nope, no ladder. Um, let's, uh, get out of this place if I can. Retreat entrance. Oh, I see, you have to find, you have to push the retreat button in order to leave a, um, an entrance. Let's try going back in there. And just taking a step forward and go in that one. There we go. 
go in that one. Is that a ladder? Oh, wait, there's something over here. What could it be? Uh, pick up or drop. So we picked up something. Swap hands. You can um, use your, I think it's a bow and arrow. And rotate pack. Doesn't seem to do anything yet. Swap pack. I guess it's like your inventory and now it's in your hand. I think it's in my hand now. <laughs> I think. See, it's a little cryptic. It's a little old school. Kind of hard to, kind of hard to um, decipher a little bit. But I like that. I like that. Okay, let's uh, retreat from entrance. And let's check out whatever that is. is. That food, maybe. Let's uh, pick it up. I don't know what that is. Rotate. Swap my hands. I rotate my pack. Swap my pack. Oh, I see you, you can't have both at once. Oh, you can only have, you have two hands, okay. You have to pick up one and put it in the other hand, and then you can pick up what you dropped. That's pretty cool. It's another thing that's uh, kind of common in things like Skyrim or something like that. You know, Elder Scrolls, man. Okay, let's go down this ladder. Use ladder. Now we're on floor two, it says. I'll check the map. We're not going to be able to play this game fully, but you can see I'm on the second lowest area on that blue blue middle part where that flashing white dot is. That's that's me on the map. Here's a dark hallway. See, I don't know how to attack. Okay, here's the attack button. <laughs> I'm going to find out where that is first. It could get scary here, guys. There might be a minotaur running around. Let's open the door. I guess they're all gates. They don't really look like it, but they are. Let's, uh... Get out of here. Get out of there. Open it up. Hoping I can find some kind of monster or something to show you guys. I guess you can't run backwards. That's what the retreat is for. So uh, there's no like back up button. You know what I mean on, on the thumbstick, you know? You know what I mean? Okay, um, we're going to try this, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a monster. Attack it. Shoot it with arrow. Kill the fire. Did we die already? Oh, no, guys. Well, that's Minotaur for you guys. Here is the Intellivision flashback system itself. It's fairly simple. It has that sort of retro wood paneling on it. Yes, everything had wood paneling, I guess, in the 70s. I don't know, I wasn't alive in the 70s, but uh, I've heard a lot about this wood paneling stuff. Actually, I think it looks pretty cool. And by the way, this is very, very lightweight. This is like nearly hollow. I think a majority of this system was just for design purposes to replicate the original console. However, it is in a smaller size. Everything's been shrunken to scale. I'm not sure how much because I don't have the original system to compare it to, but it is significantly smaller. And I'll show you how it is, um, how I know that. Because these little cutouts right here, this is where on the original system you would place your controllers. Now the controllers are, of course, the exact size as the original. They're replica controllers, and obviously they're not going to fit in those slots. So what the slots were for originally was, it's similar to a Famicom, if you've seen the Japanese Nintendo Entertainment System called the Famicom, uh, it also has wired controllers. The wires are built into the system, I believe. Uh, I wasn't able to confirm that, but from appearance it looks like they were wired into the system. So you always had your player 1 and 2 controllers handy. It's kind of disappointing that this isn't big enough to hold the controllers, because that would have been a cool feature for this flashback. So that's one of my main uh, disappointments with this. It does have a new reset button, very modern feeling and clicky. It also has a power button that clicks in and then clicks off. Um, in addition, it does have a very modern standard video cable. Well, I guess it's not that modern because it's not HDMI, but it has the yellow and the white and it's mono sound um, which isn't really that important for these games because they're not too heavily intensive on the music. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is these controller ports. These are new. 
and if you know your video game history, these are once again the same as the Sega Genesis and the Atari 2600, among other consoles. Now this baffles me. I don't know if this is like this on the original system or not, but here's the power adapter. It actually has a really handy red light. When you plug it in, the light comes on, uh, just to let you know that power is flowing. Now the system has it on the side right there. And the AV is on the back all the way over there. So you got it right here and here. This is where your power and your AV go. That's pretty far apart. And that's pretty bad, in my opinion. That's a bad design flaw, in my opinion. Um, especially since this is out on the front. This is near the front of the system. Um, it doesn't seem that bad without it plugged in. And it's cool that you can unplug it from the console itself, which is actually a really good idea. Um, but I wish they would have positioned it a little bit closer because look, it sticks out like that. You've got your cords, you've got your other cord, and you've got your power cord. So you've got like cords coming out almost every uh, side of this console. And that's kind of a minor annoyance. Actually, it's probably the biggest annoyance on this console itself. It's called Night Stalker. I'll have a close up of the overlay for you. And this one's pretty simplistic. You basically have the directions on this pad. This game, instead of having a shoot button on the side, you have four directions to shoot. So you actually have to push up, down, left or right on this uh, pad right here um, in correspondence with the overlay to uh, shoot in that direction. It's a little different than you might think. It's not like you just shoot in any direction that you're facing. It's, it's uh, you shoot in a direction like that. So it's kind of like a you know how they have those games with twin thumbsticks? It's kind of like that in a way. Okay, Night Stalker. Here we go. And you're starting this little dungeon, or this little uh, cage. You have to find the gun. The gun doesn't always start out where you want it to. And you, you're going after this like skeleton alien looking guy. And you gotta shoot him. <laughs> and he's a bad guy. And you're, you're the little guy running, that guy with the long legs. Long legged man. And there's a spider there too, but I don't... See, I don't really understand the point of the spider, but you can kill him. And there's these little tiny bugs that come around, you can... They don't really hurt you, I don't think, but they, um, like that one down there. But they, um... Oh man. Do I have my gun now? I think I do. Usually if you don't have your gun, it'll start spawning on the map somewhere. Okay, come on down. Come on down. Get ya. Run, run dude, run! He wasn't running! He wasn't running! We got each other, so... So far it's a tie game. It's a cat's game. Okay, we're gonna go down here. Grab my pistol. And, you know, I really like these overlays because the graphics on the overlays usually correspond to the graphics on the game. That one I was able to get away. I love how the bad guy explodes all across the map. It's not just like a little explosion of fire. It's like he just bursts everywhere. It's great. It's great animation. That's one of the things that a lot of people praise this system for uh, when it first was released was that it has better graphics technology than Atari 2600 did. Because Atari 2600 was one of its main competitors, although um, it's hard to tell which one is more memorable in, in the days since. I think Atari is definitely more popular, but uh, could be wrong. I totally missed that. No. No. So the ISO spider doesn't kill you. Do I not have my gun? There we go. Gotcha! Look at that spoder. Oh, he that guy spawned behind me. So they, this game's kind of cool. You know how in Pac-Man when you beat a level or you, you like, you know, you get all the things done in the level uh, and the map changes and the enemies are, they have different patterns and stuff. This one, not so much. It's pretty much the same thing as far as I've seen and that kind of makes it old. If there is variation, it doesn't come on quick enough. So, I mean, I'm already starting to get a little bored from this. Um, not just because, you know, it doesn't look like much, but there isn't really much to it. It's just, you know, hide and seek, pretty much. It is kind of fun, and I like the visuals. Uh, for what they are. I'll try to get one more shot in there. 
Gotcha. Oh, he got me too. I'd say we did a pretty fair fight. All right, so that was Night Stalker. Now this actually comes with two controllers, one and two, which I'll place on top of the console now. Um, and it comes with these magic overlays. Now, the handy thing about this is since there is two controllers, they give you multiple copies of all the ones included. Or, I believe they do. At least for the multiplayer games, they definitely do. Uh, and even if you don't play multiplayer, you can use them as a backup. Now, these are pretty cool quality. Um, they're not just, you know, on paper, like, you know, printer paper. They're actually on a sort of laminated... I don't know if you can see that shine. It's sort of laminated. It's sort of flexible, which is good. And it's kind of like flat and matte on the back, but the front is glossy. Uh, and the printed on picture looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to show you what these do first, and then we'll go over all the ones that I have. Now this is the controller. This uses a slide wheel, um, but you don't really use it like an iPod. It actually looks a lot like an iPod's wheel in, in some ways. Um, the best way that I know to play is just leave your thumb there the whole time. Uh, at first I was trying to use it like that, like a D-pad or buttons. It really works best if you leave your thumb on the pad and kind of tilt. Once you kind of get the hang of it, it works really good. And uh, when you're playing a game, once you start using it like this, you won't uh, notice it too much. And it actually works pretty dang good. Uh, when you're playing like a game where you actually run around on a uh, overhead view, you can use that like that to go up and diagonal. You can go down. You can go any direction that you need to go. And you can easily slide there to there from up to down or left to right without moving the circle all the way around because it does move. I don't know if you can really see that, but it does actually slide around. Um, and it's slick enough on the texture that you can move on it freely. Now in addition you've got all these buttons which will be covered by the overlay in most games. So you've got 1 through 9, 0, clear and enter, similar to a telephone. Um, <laughs> yeah, a telephone. What's a telephone, son? Um, when I was your age, we used to talk on the phone. Wait. People still call them phones. Okay, never mind. Um, so we got these buttons here. And then we've got the same kind of buttons here. In most games, the buttons here do the same as the buttons there. But, uh, I'm not sure about all games. And in the back, they still have the outset from when it sat in the console on the original version. So this is like an original mold, basically. Or like an exact mold of the original. The only difference that I noticed about this and the original, besides the wired um, input, is on the original the cord was kind of like curly, um, and this one is just a straight cord like a, like any other game console that you could probably think of. Um, so I'm going to show you these overlays. They slide in from the top, and that little slot right there. It's a really small slot. Like you don't even notice it without it. See. And it's kind of cool because the title of the game stays on the top. You know, and I know it's really old school and it's really limited and it's completely different, but it kind of reminds me of Nintendo Wii U, how you have a gamepad screen and then you have that on your controller. It, it kind of reminds me of Nintendo Wii U in a very limited way. Uh, of course, it's not a touch screen. It's not really a screen itself. It's just a card, but um, it's kind of achieves the same thing in some ways. Um, so this would uh, cover up the buttons, and uh, yeah, it basically tells you the controls. Oh, this game we have to do, guys. This is fun. Um, this is really fun. I really recommend this game. This is one of my highest, most entertaining games on this system overall in the top three. If I had to pick three, I think this is definitely in the top three, and uh, maybe even the best. Uh, Shark Shark. Yes, exclamation points. And this is really, really good game. Really, really good. Um, you can play with one or two players. So I'm going to select one. When you play two players, it's the same time versus on the same screen, which is really cool. Um, so we start. Now what you are is you're a fish. The controls are perfect, just as you, you'd expect. You don't need to worry about any overlays or any buttons. It's really good. That's some of the best games on here, just simplistic ones. Uh, what you're doing is you're eating fish. I'm the yellow fish. Uh, it's currently uh, over to the left. And you gotta eat these fish while dodging sharks. Now you can only eat fish that are your size or smaller. But you have five lives. So we're gonna keep going. You gotta watch where the shark usually spawns on this side of the screen. 
Yeah, there he is. Now, I'm not very good at this, but I have made it kind of far. Uh, maybe about, like, three minutes into it or something like that, but <laughs> that's not very far, but it's, uh, something. It's better than what I'll probably do today. Uh, three minutes is kind of a long time for some of these arcade-style games. Now, there's been replicas of this game in the future. <laughs> in the future! <laughs> I don't mean, like, in more recent years. There's, there's games that have kind of cloned this kind of style of gameplay. It's a very simplistic game, very, very, uh, simple, but at the same time creative, and, uh, it's still a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't played it on two-player yet, but I can see how it would be fun. Now, there's other fish and that crab, which is sometimes a lobster, um, can also steal your, uh, things that you're trying to eat, because the purpose is to eat things. And, ooh, that, that's a little combo there. Let's see, I got a little bigger now. Oh, no! <laughs> that shark, he comes on so fast compared to the other fish. And he's the most deadliest thing. I think, I'm not sure, I'm taking a guess here that maybe, just maybe, you can eat the shark at the very end of the game. And that might be the final victory. But I'm not entirely sure about that, because I don't understand what you would do if you just, you know, you didn't, um, eat the shark. Oh, and yeah, the, the other fish that are bigger than you, if you try to go near him, you die as well. Because they eat you. Luckily, the fish don't actually, like, continue that. I did pretty bad, but, you know, it's, it's not about the gameplay. It is about the gameplay. <laughs> it's it's not about winning or losing in this video, it's just about having fun. And it's mainly about showing what the system is and what it can do. Tower of Doom, okay. This might be one of the last ones we play. This is the contender for um, one of the best games on this console. Um, Tower of Doom is really good. I'm going to start with Novice. It goes down for six levels. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it past all six levels. Because it's a dungeon game. Uh, like a D&D style thing, I guess. But more action. Sort of like, plays like a Zelda actually. Uh, a little bit, uh, some of the Shadowgate style menus. Or, I mean the menus are kind of like the Shadowgate uh, menus on that game. And they're also kind of like the menus on uh, Dragon Quest. You'll see that pretty soon. Uh, we're going to go to Novice. You have all these different classes. And I, this is a really complex game, but I don't understand it very well. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're in the dungeon. We're a green knight. We're attack that wolf. Unlike on the live stream, I wasn't able to attack with the warrior for some reason. Uh, you attack using this top side button. The bottom side button on either side brings you to this menu over to the left side. Now what you can do here is you can click on that. It tells you your stats every time you click on it. So you got stamina, diplomacy, life force, experience, treasure, and your class and your level, and strength. Now you've also got your weapon. You've got open door we're gonna do and you've got these potions which I don't really understand what they are and you got some kind of staff or rod you got these other little uh, potions or bags and you got like some kind of gem and a key and I'm not entirely sure what all those are for but you can pick them up throughout the game so I really got to figure this game out a little bit more I have beat the um, main dungeon twice on novice so I, I, I kind of know what I'm doing but it doesn't quite uh, make sense yet and you switch back to here, and you are in this part. Now that thing on the top left is your map. Um, unlike Legend of Zelda, you have a mini-map. And uh, I'm talking about Legend of Zelda 1, by the way. Um, well, I guess you have a mini-map on that too, but this one's a little more direct, I guess, and it uncovers as you go, instead of having to find map pieces. Just a little different uh, gameplay. I think you actually have limited... Um, weapons so you gotta kind of be careful on what you're using them if i can get to the weapon i got that guy okay now we're going to, uh, to dodge this dragon okay or, or kill him um there's the first staircase i'm only going to show two floors because because, because time. So you go here, and then you see that tinges to a down. It was a door, now it's just down the stairs. So we're gonna go down the stairs. So 
So now I don't have my axe. I have to find something so I can equip. What's that? So there's certain things in this game that I just don't understand what they are. And uh, some of the things I don't really understand um, what they're for or even how to use them. So it's, it's really confusing. Uh, it seems like a game that would have had an included overlay, but it, it doesn't. Another thing you can do is you can go here and you can pick up stuff, I think. If you have the inventory space, but maybe not. I'm going to try equipping another item from my inventory. This is a curses. I don't understand that either. And then you can pick up another inventory slot. I think these two bottom rows, like this row and that row, are things you can pick up. Whereas on the top it's your weapon, uh, the menu, something else, and uh, the door key, uh, the door, um, what's it called? Door and staircase button. Well, let's um, end this game. It's actually pretty cool. I played it for about an hour or two um, in total, and so it's one of my most played games. So we're going to go down this floor and probably just going to restart the game back to the main menu. Well, that's it on my video for the Intellivision. Yep, Intellivision Flashback. That's pretty much all there is to say about it, except for there is a lot of other games with varying degree in quality, varying degree in genre, and lots of different play styles, including different controller schemes and uh, different kinds of overlays and lots of other cool stuff. So, let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you'd like to support my channel, Happy Beard Games, leave a like, leave a subscribe if you have not yet, and leave a comment, and be sure to share it with your friends in case you think that they may be interested in Happy Beard Games. Stay tuned to Happy Beard Games for more classic gaming goodness and the continuing series of the Alphabet of Video Games. Alright, until next time, Happy Beard Games will see you then. Happy Beard Games! Ow.